All right, welcome to this old data center. We're going to show today how to back up VMC on AWS with the new Veeam 12, highly anticipated feature of directly backing up to S3. Um, so up until recently, for VMware Cloud and AWS specifically, um, but also, you know, in general, backing up from leveraging Veeam essentially to back up to an S3 repository from on-premises, not as big a deal to sort of have the local uh, repository storage here and then a scale-out backup repository configuration to push to S3 over a period of time. Um, however, in VMC and AWS, a little more uh, advantage here of going directly to S3 in a lot of cases, right? It, it, because we would have needed to stand up typically in this reference architecture, a repository configuration uh, using EBS volumes and EC2 instances in order to push out to S3. Um, you know, and especially if you wanted to leverage some, one of the advantages around this elastic network interface here, where it's a high speed, low latency direct connection into VMC or into AWS resources from VMC. So with Veeam 12 and one of, like I said, uh, you know, anticipated features, to be able to go directly to S3 really cuts these resources out, right? And there may be caveats to that, and there may be reasons to do it or not do it. Uh, but in general, certainly this could be a much more cost-effective solution uh, if we can have the Veeam backup infrastructure inside of VMC, where presumably my costs are already paid for, for resources, and push directly to S3 while still leveraging the Elastic Network Interface. So that's what we're going to do today. Uh, just to give you a quick lay of the land, I've got a one host VMC cluster running. Uh, here is that vCenter. So I have a Veeam 12 server, and I actually have a, another server over here. This is going to be my backup target once I get things up and going. Um, so if I launch this web console and log in, you see I have a Veeam 12 install already done. Um, so this was a pretty basic you know, next, next, okay, wait for it to install type of approach. Nothing real fancy here yet. Um, there are a few saved credentials in here just so I can skip those pieces as I'm configuring. Uh, but for the most part, um, this should be pretty clean at this point. So no jobs configured, no inventory configured. And uh, the only backup repository is the default one that lands on the C drive. The only proxy is really itself. Uh, and then the VMware one that got deployed when I ran this last time which is also itself. Uh, so there's no extra repositories or anything like that, or uh, sorry, proxies uh, at this point. Uh, obviously in a production deployment, you'll wanna pay much more attention to all of that. Um, just another heads up, one configuration I did make is I did add the IP to my host file on this particular box. Again, you would probably be having DNS handle this for you, um, but with VMC, that's actually a, a relatively involve configuration to switch over to private IP address resolution because uh, it affects kind of the ability to connect into vCenter you know, quickly and easily in a lab, I will say. Uh, but just a heads up that um, obviously DNS will be quite important because you cannot just connect to the vCenter by IP. Uh, it has to be by fully qualified domain name. Uh, so that's kind of the first heads up. And then the other uh, quick configuration I have ready to go is the stuff that I need to do on the AWS side. So let's get after it. We will start here uh, on the VMC side with a few uh, the really uh, some, pre some important prerequisites around firewall configurations. Um, so first configuration you will want to leverage is making sure that the S3 uh, over the connected VPC is enabled. If you know that's obviously dependent on how you want to actually deploy this thing, but you know, leveraging the ENI is, a, is obviously the point of this video. So making sure that that's enabled and then we'll go through some AWS side of that configuration to support that. And then there's a few gateway firewall configurations we need to put in place. Um, so starting with the management gateway, we'll need to add two sets of rules. Uh, first, the vCenter, or sorry, the Veeam server access to vCenter. So the source, uh, in my case, I already have it defined as Veeam server. So this is just a, a new object I created where the only member 
is the IP address for my Veeam server that's deployed in the VMC environment. So we'll grab that. The destination is actually a system defined group already configured for you in a new deployment. That's the vCenter. And then we will need the HTTPS. I, I, I don't think you need the SSO, but I always turn on the ping at least. Um, and then we will add one more. And this is an important one, Veeam access to the hosts themselves. So again, it'll be the same source, Veeam server. And the destination this time, and you can't combine these in the same rules, so you do have to make two separate rules, will be the ESXi hosts themselves. Um, and you do need 902 and HTTPS for this to work. And again, I usually turn on ping just in case I need to get into some troubleshooting. Uh, if you're new to VMC or NSX in general, uh, you got to remember to publish these rules before they will take effect. Make sure they're enabled. You can also enable uh, logging for these rules if you do want to troubleshoot. Those will actually end up into vRealize log insight uh, on the VMC uh, cloud portal. Um, but just so you know that it's there. And then with that configuration in place, we should be able to now hop over to the Veeam server and add our first item here, which is the vSphere infrastructure itself. So like I said, I'm going to grab the fully qualified domain name here. Paste that. I have existing credentials, like I said, so you would use your cloud admin at vmc.local credentials that are given to you by the portal. And then, yeah, throughout this process, it's not just talking to the vCenter, but also to the hosts as well. So you do want to make sure that both of those firewall rules are in place to get past this screen. And then we can click finish. So now you should see our inventory over here, our SDDC data center, and inside the compute resource pool, we have the Veeam server itself and then the server we are going to eventually back up here. Um, but we need a target to back up to, right? So in backup infrastructure, we're going to add a new backup repository and we are gonna go straight to object storage. So we're gonna choose Amazon S3. You can see there's quite a few already in here. I'm gonna go to regular S3 uh, in this case because uh, it's gonna be temporary and I'm gonna pull it down. Uh, I don't want to do infrequent access or Glacier in my particular case because I'm going to be deleting it. Uh, but for longer term type deployments, 90 days out especially, uh, certainly Glacier is a much more cost effective and, and probably the direction a lot of people are going to go. Um, but before I can finish this configuration, uh, I've got to go create a bucket. So if you hop over into the VPCs, you can see I have a single VPC for my VMC environment. Within here, I have a subnet um, for that connected VPC. Uh, it's in US East 2A uh, in availability zone one. Uh, and if I go over to, you know, kind of verify that I don't have a network ACL blocking S3 access and things like that, I want to make sure that this uh, subnet is configured to get out to S3 when I get there. Um, usually by default, you're fine. Uh, and then if I go over to EC2 and actually go down to network interfaces, this is a list of all the ENIs. Um, you know, it'll be other ENIs in here if you have EC2 instances. But in this case, these are all my VMC interfaces. So this is the connectivity from my VMC hosts, which are actually hosted in VMware's tenant, not in yours, right? So this is how that connectivity ends up landing into your AWS environment. Uh, and there's other ways with, with the VMware Transit Gateway or your own Transit Gateway, uh, but by default out of the box, uh, and certainly for things like backup traffic, where we want to keep the costs low uh, and have the latency and connectivity bandwidth nice and high, then ENI is a is a great option and, and built for you by default in the initial configuration. So uh, keeping track of some of these things, right, US East uh, 2A in my case, um, I'm going to hop over to the S3 configuration and create my bucket. So I'm gonna create a new bucket for my uh, Veeam 12 backups. I'm gonna also put it in the same region. Uh, and I'm going to have, uh, in my case, not public access, but I have a, a key that will work for this. Uh, I'm not gonna turn on versioning or anything like that. I'll let it manage its own encryption key. So a very straightforward configuration. Uh, that I'll put in place and 
I will obviously need this name uh, at some point. But by default, this is a bucket that's accessible over the internet, uh, not over an ENI. So for that, I want to create an S3 endpoint. So we're going to hop over to endpoints here in the bottom uh, or on the lower part of the VPC configuration. We're going to create a new endpoint. AWS services is the correct one for this. It's going to be the, we'll call it the VMC S3 endpoint. Um, in this case, it's going to be for the US East 2. And you actually have to find uh, the US East 2.S3 service name because um, you want to make sure you're choosing uh, the gateway type of the actual region you're going to be backing up in. And then when you select your VPC, uh, we'll select the one that's connected to our VMC SDDC configuration. And then here's that route table ID. So we want to, if you have multiple ones, you want to make sure you choose the main mount route table. Um, but by default, certainly there will only be one. So you just grab that. We won't put a custom policy on this one. Uh, certainly if you have tagging for your organization, you'll want to put those tags in here as well. Uh, and then that will complete the configuration on the VMC side. We do need to hop back over to the gateway firewall, this time in the compute gateway, and we will create a Veeam to S3 firewall configuration now. So again, the uh, group, in my case, I had already created it, uh, of Veeam server. I say Veeam servers here, I only have one, but certainly if you had proxies, that's what would go in this list because that's what's accessing the S3 destination. Uh, but there is already an S3 prefixes configuration built into VMC. That's the one you're going to choose as the destination. Um, for services, filter to find it quick, but it's going to be just HTTPS. And then for the applied to, we can choose the VPC interface. Again, don't forget to hit publish. And now we can hop back over to Veeam and whoop, complete our S3 configuration. So again, like I said, I already have a key um, configured in here. Uh, the region is going to be global in my case. It's just for you know GovCloud or China. Um, so we'll choose next, and it should load the configuration. Um, so if you can't get this far, it's certainly permissions and policies and things like that that you start need to look at. Uh, I'm going to choose US East 2. You should certainly be able to see your bucket in here. So again, if you can't, uh, you have something missing either in permissions or that S3 endpoint configuration. We can create a new folder. Put my backups into that folder. You can certainly limit uh, and create immutable um, configurations. You'll want to certainly understand what you're doing. Uh, again, same thing with infrequent access. You'll want to make sure you understand what turning these boxes on because uh, they certainly can represent higher costs for you or your organization. Um, Power, VM, uh, Power NFS does not work on VMC, unfortunately, so you can certainly disable that. And in my case, these uh, roles were already pushed to the server, so it really doesn't have to do those pieces. Um, we'll finish this up. All right. So there's our repository as an S3 endpoint over the ENI. And we will create our job. So we will back up a virtual machine. Uh, we'll call it Windows whoops, servers. Obviously, I'm only going to have one. So I'll just grab it individually in my case. I'm going to back it up to the Amazon S3 directly, keep it for seven days. Um, you can certainly still create secondary jobs. Um, I think you could probably even make this part of a scale-out backup repository, which is interesting. I haven't tried to do anything like that. Uh, but then it's all your typical Veeam configurations from this point, whether you want to do guest processing, run it automatically, schedule it, all that kind of good stuff. So I will run it as I finish. Let this fire up and back it up directly to S3. So no scale out backup repository. 
uh, no local storage requirement really, um, just straight out to the object storage immediately, right? So we can see over here, typical uh, Veeam operations you would expect, uh, creating a snapshot, removing a snapshot, um, and uh, just as a kind of aside, the hot add is the only supported transport mechanism out of VMC. It just has to do with the level of access you actually have to your VMC environment. You don't get direct root access to hosts, for example, so you can't really use some of the feature set, um, but certainly effective uh, and no problem integrating into VMC, uh, very similar to what you're used to in an on-premises environment. And here it is moving data out to S3. That had a pretty good clip. All right, so we moved, you know, a seven, just about eight gigabytes of data in just about three minutes. Um, the proxy was the bottleneck, so uh, no problems pushing a, a good clip of data out to S3 directly as part of the backup. So if we hop over to the object storage, you can see the server is in there with one restore point. Um, Remember, you can't do instant recovery in a VMC environment. That just has to do with the type of access that you get to the hosts and, and some of the limited access you get in a VMC environment. Uh, however, you do have plenty of other options to get um, VMs, disks, restores back to VMC, uh, and even guest files, right? So we can pick the recovery point, step through the process, hit browse, and let it mount the S3 storage and give us an interface into recovering individual files straight out of the backup uh, running on S3. You can see the process here of the file level restore job running. Give that a minute. Here it comes. And here we go. Is our C drive and all our folders, and we can go ahead and grab whatever files we need.